Dear friends, the Sunday law will be by popular demand. There is a Sunday law coming and it will be legislated by the United States and it will be enforced by the United States government. Presently, there are hundreds of thousands of marches protesting, urging governments to do more for climate change, to do more for protection or for protecting the earth against climate, climate change. But many of the people do not know that the organizers of these marches, of these protests, they are behind religious legislation. They want to legislate religion for the whole world. They want to legislate Sunday as a day of rest, Sunday as a day of worship. It says Climate Summit 2021. Nearly 200 countries kicked off COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland. And when the governments were gathering inside, inside this uh, building, large crowds of protesters were outside demanding, calling for climate action. The spirit of prophecy tells us that what is behind all these marches or all these protests is a Sunday law. It tells us political corruption is destroying love of justice and regard for truth. And even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. So the Sunday law will be by the people people demanding governments to enact a law making Sunday a day of rest and a day for worship to protect the planet from great catastrophes, great disasters that are coming. Satan is behind all these things, including marches, protests, and in order to bring all religions together, praying together and asking, commanding or demanding from governments to pass religious law Sunday as a day of worship. Indigenous led human flood calls for climate justice in Glasgow. Climate justice is a religious term. It has to do with the social justice. It has to do with the doctrine for social justice of the papacy. And it says there are no borders, no religions, no colors. Chilean Mapuche led massive march in the middle of COP26. And they are protesting. They protest in Glasgow for climate ineffectiveness. They want governments to do more to act quick, to reduce the temperature of the climate in your planet. It says here, world leaders discuss the course of the fight against climate change at COP26. And of course, the course of the fight against climate change is very soon turning religious, is very soon turning spiritual, unifying all religions together, praying together. And it says the UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, concluded with an agreement to urge countries around the world to begin phasing out coal in what is the world's first call to leave fossil fuel behind. COP26. Tens of thousands of people take to the streets of Glasgow to demand action on climate change. What is that they are requesting? What are they demanding? They are demanding governments for net zero. So they want that the carbon dioxide that is produced should be balanced, should, should be eliminated 
as much as it is produced. In the city of Mexico, the capital city of Mexico seeks to promote the habit of Sunday without a car. And of course, you can see that this is for religious legislation, making Sunday a day of rest, making Sunday a day with no car in order to protect the health of people. But very soon, Sunday will be a day of rest. Sunday will be a day of worship also. It says that the head of the Sports Institute of Mexico City, Javier Hidalgo, hopes that with Sunday activities, such as move by bicycle, it will become a habit not to use the car on this day of the week. Why on this day of the week? Because Sunday is a day that they want to make spiritual and a day of rest, a day for worship. And it says, although it is not yet mandatory, that means it will be mandatory to make Sunday a day of no car, without a car. Although it is not yet mandatory in Mexico City, they seek to promote the habit, a Sunday without a car. Today, the head of the government, Claudia Sheinbaum, said that for now it is a promotion, it is a campaign, which does not include prohibitions. But very soon, you will not be allowed to drive your car on Sunday in Mexico City and in every other city of the whole world. You will have Sunday as a day for worship. This is in Spain. Car free Sundays from October to raise awareness about a more sustainable Granada. Granada will once again enjoy the so-called car free Sundays from October, in which through a series of activities organized by the Granada City Council, citizens are allowed to enjoy in the main urban roads of the city in which they do not have vehicles. So in which they do not, vehicles will have room for a real party in defense of a new mobility model. So what they're saying is, you will have more space for people to enjoy life. You will have more space to enjoy parties. And of course, what they want is a global Sunday law, a global celebration party where there is no noise, there is no pollution, there is no movement on Sunday. Moses, to Moses, it was revealed what was to take place in the time of the end. To Moses, it was revealed how the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus took place. The crucifixion of the Lord Jesus took place by popular demand, but it was religious leaders that convinced the people to request, to demand from the governor to crucify the Lord Jesus. So in Patriarchs and Prophets, we read, and now another scene passed before him, before Moses. He had been shown the work of Satan in leading the Jews to reject Christ. While they professed to honor his father's law, they rejected the Lord Jesus. And now he saw the Christian world under a similar deception in professing to accept Christ while they rejected God's law. He had heard from the priests and elders the frenzied cry, away with him, crucify him, crucify him. And now he heard from professedly Christian teachers the cry, away with the law. He saw the Sabbath trodden, trodden underfoot and a spurious institution established in its place. Again, Moses was filled with astonishment and horror. How could those who believed in Christ reject the law spoken by his own voice upon the sacred mount? How could any that feared God 
set aside the law, which is the foundation of his government in heaven and earth. What happened in Argentina? The new Sunday rest ordinance enters into force. Today, the municipal executive department promulgated the modifications made to the Sunday rest ordinance, which was unanimously approved last week by the council. Join article one, join ordinance number 4117-15, article number four, which will be worded as follows. The commercial and or service establishments of the city of Galvez must remain closed on Sundays and those declared as national holidays that are specifically detailed. This is because they want to have a Sunday rest ordinance. And this is a religious term also. And who is behind this Sunday law or Sunday ordinance for rest? Pope Francis, of course, he's also Argentinian. Pope Francis warns us that we must do more to save our planet. How does he intend to save our planet? Pope Francis insists, today we need to find equitable and sustainable lifestyles that restore to the earth the rest it deserves. Sufficient means of subsistence, subsistence for all without destroying the ecosystems that support us. So he is calling for a day of rest and he has been campaigning for Sunday to be a day of rest, a day for protection of the climate, for protection of the earth, of the planet. October 22nd, 2021, Sunday break or Sunday rest in supermarkets. Charata seeks to approve the ordinance. And it says, Charata agency, despite certain political disagreements between councillors, both blocks would agree to approve the ordinance on Sunday rest in supermarkets. So we have political parties, but they unite for Sunday as a day of rest. We also had political parties in the day of the Lord Jesus crucifixion, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They united, even though they were against each other, they united demanding for Jesus to be crucified. Again, when it comes to Sunday legislation, when it comes to Sunday as a day of rest, political parties unite to bring Sunday as a day of rest. In the Bible, in the, in the book of Mark 15, verse nine, it says, but Pilate answered them saying, will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And in verse 11, but the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. So it was the religious leaders that moved the crowds of people to demand for the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. On the 11th of March, the, the global action for climate began. And this is a global action of inter-religious character, religions together asking for climate action from the governments. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse eight, it says, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. In this campaign for inter-religious, global inter-religious action for climate, they are commanding every person of the earth to do a unified and silenced or silent prayer so they are asking the, the world governments to come and pray together, asking for protection for creation. But the Lord says that 
there is only one prayer that the Lord finds delightful, the prayer of the upright, the prayer of him that worships the Lord Jesus and obeys his commandments. In this magazine, they ask, will God answer our prayers about climate change? Catholics in Glasgow await an urgent climate meeting. The people of faith in Glasgow, these are all religions together, Hindus, Buddhists, all of them, they have a day of worship and the day of worship is Sunday. So the people of faith in Glasgow, many energized by the social teaching document of Pope Francis, Laudato Si, they know that they can act as catalysts of change. Of course, they can act as catalysts of change. They, they will be demanding for Sunday to be a day of worship, Sunday to be a day of rest. So they ask the question, will God answer our prayers about climate change? The Bible gives the answer. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 28, verse nine. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So is God listening to the prayers of all religions together? When all these religions worship idols, worship other gods, will God answer the prayers? The second commandment says we should not make an idol, neither worship that idol. And the fourth commandment says we must worship the creator on the Sabbath day, on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. In the Great Controversy, page 592, it says, the dignitaries of church and state will unite to bribe, persuade, or compel all classes to honor the Sunday. All people will honor Sunday as a day of worship. Can faith leaders shift public opinion toward climate action? Of course, faith leaders will shift the public opinion. It was the faith leaders that shifted the public opinion in regards to the Lord Jesus. Remember, there were hundreds of thousands of followers of the Lord Jesus because he was always doing good. He was always healing the sick. So hundreds of people loved the Lord Jesus, but the religious leaders shifted the opinion of the crowds and they demanded for the Lord Jesus to be crucified. It was after his crucifixion that the people realized that they had killed the son of God. It was only after the crucifixion. With the Sunday law, with Sunday as a day of rest, it will, it will be too late for the people to realize that they have been fighting against the law of God and millions of people will be deceived. Hundreds of millions of people will be deceived. It says here, local faith leaders call for climate justice ahead of UN climate change conference. People of faith, people from many religions praying together, asking the governments for, for legislation to protect planet Earth. And the Pope, he also gathered religious leaders, 40 religions together. And he, together with religious leaders, pleaded governments to restore the planet. And what they did, all religions together praying in Glasgow, religious leaders stand united as COP26 gets underway. All religions together praying on that Sunday, the 1st of October, when the governments were beginning the United Nations Summit for Climate Change. The religious leaders were praying outside. And this is, in, this is a sign that religious leaders want to shift or to change the mentality of people. So that what now is, a campaign for climate change very soon will turn a campaign for Sunday worship. And there is evidence that Sunday is a day for worship. 
for the world, for world religions, and I campaign to bring Sunday as a day for worship by law, by global law that will begin in the United States. It says earlier on Sunday, an interfaith vigil convened hundreds of religious leaders at George Square in central Glasgow, where a joint statement was shared urging governments to put the Paris Agreement into action and join in collective prayer with all those who are working for a successful COP26. So this was a collective prayer. And remember, even governments will submit to this legislation, religious legislation, because all great and small will worship the beast. Everyone on planet earth will be commanded, compelled to worship on Sunday. So religions for the climate, this is from Spanish. Faithful of different faiths cry out for climate justice at COP26 in Glasgow, knowing that in all countries, poor people are the most punished by this crisis. When the Lord Jesus was crucified, hundreds of people demanded Jesus to be crucified. And it was by popular demand. It was religious leaders and the people demanding the crucifixion of Jesus. In Mark chapter 15, verse 12 says, and Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? Mark chapter 15, verse 13, and they cry, cried out again, crucify him, crucify him. In Mark chapter 15, verse 14 says, then Pilate said unto them, why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. What evil has the Lord Jesus done? It was because of hatred, because of jealousy, that religious leader, religious leaders demanded the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. And the same will happen with this law. People will be listening to the religious leaders and religious people will be convinced, will be compelled to demand for a, for a law making Sunday a day of worship. The spirit of prophecy says, even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. At the summit for climate change, Joe Biden, the current president of the United States, apologizes at COP26 for the lack of environmental actions during the Trump administration. And also the ex-president of the United States, Barack Obama. Barack Obama launches attack on Trump at COP26 for years of hostility towards climate science. Obama said, the United States is re-engaging with the world on climate and tried to convince the world that the United States has stayed on track even during the Trump years, while questions linger at the conference about how the United States plans to make up for lost time. So this is very important because Obama reveals that the United States has always been involved in climate change, even during the years of Donald Trump. And of course, here we see the evidence. General Motors, this happened in 2018. General Motors announces the closure of seven factories, at least 14,500 workers 
affected. And then it says five of the factories are in North America. The other two unspecified. So this is evidence because stopping factories that produce carbon dioxide, it is also a campaign for climate protection. And the following year, 2019, Trump presses General Motors to close plants in China or Mexico and reopen the one in Ohio. How can this be? General Motors has already closed seven factories and five of them in the United States. And yet Donald Trump says General Motors should close more plants in China or Mexico and reopen just one in the United States, in Ohio. Then of course we have a campaign in the whole world. Every year in September, there is a car-free Sunday or car-free day. And of course, car-free Sundays may be introduced in Denmark, not only one, one day in the year, but car-free Sundays every Sunday. Also in Singapore, car-free Sundays for Singapore. And in many other cities, in many other countries, in Europe in, and around the world, car-free Sunday is coming. Not only one day a year, but every Sunday of the year. So Obama launches attack on Trump. It continues saying, Despite Trump, Obama said the American people kept our original commitment under the Paris Agreement. Not only that, but the rest of the world stayed in the agreement. And now with President Biden and his administration rejoining the agreement, the United States government is once again committed and ready to take a leadership role. This is prophesied that the United States will be the leader and that the whole world will follow the leader. The whole world will follow the example of the United States. And of course, the United States has always been in, has always been in leadership in regards to climate change and the Sunday law that is behind it. In the spiritual prophecy says, six testimonies for the church, page 18. As America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy in enforcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the false Sabbath, the people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. Every country of the world will be compelled to follow the example of the United States in forcing the conscience and mandating Sunday as a day for worship. It says here, Trump withdraws U United States from Paris Climate Accord. And these outrageous allies, not only governments, but people of the world, they were against Donald Trump. They hated Donald Trump. They were angry against Donald Trump because he withdrew from the Paris Climate Change Agreement. But what happened? The Paris Agreement, the United States is formally withdrawing. When? On the 4th of November, 2020, the United States officially withdraws from the Climate Change Agreement. And it was in 2017 that he announced that the United States will pull out from the climate change agreement. So this is politics because the United States was out of the agreement only two and a half months. Because on the 20, 20th of November, 2020, the United States elected a new president, Joe Biden, and he rejoined the climate change agreement on the very day that he was inaugurated as the new president. 
And the question they ask, why Trump actually pulled out of Paris? And remember, it was only, only two and a half months that the United States was out of the climate agreement. And then they answer, it wasn't because of the climate. It wasn't because Donald Trump wanted to help American businesses. And then the answer, it was because he needed to troll the world. He needed to annoy the world. He needed to anger the whole world. What is the agenda behind? To make people to go out into the streets and protest, to create the mentality in people that they need to protest, that they need to march, that they need to demand in strikes. Remember, there were thousands of school children on strikes on Fridays against Donald Trump and for climate change. And this magazine also says that climate change or climate crisis, and then they say to really engage people, to involve people, to shift the mentality of people, to make people more willing to protest, more willing to strike, more willing to demand for, from governments. And in this case, asking for solution for climate change. But the, the leaders, they know that this is about religion. Thousands of people march in Washington to protest against Donald Trump's policy on climate change. So who is given the example for the world to follow? The United States. Hundreds of thousands of people protesting on the streets in the United States against Donald Trump. And this happened for the next three years. Thousands of people take to the streets in Washington to defend in defense of, of the climate. And then also in Europe, here we see in London, tens of thousands of people march against Trump in London. And they say together against Trump, Donald Trump's visit to the United Kingdom. And then they have ridicule, toilet and baby to in the toilet representing Trump. And what happened this year? Remember, the, the pandemic is still on. But they say the fight goes on. Young people take up protests against the climate crisis. This is in Spain, but also in every other country. And what they want, remember, because of the pandemic, they, they decreed in the whole world lockdown, sometimes for three weeks, sometimes for one month, and then in the second phase of the lockdown, Sunday lockdown, Sunday as a day to be in confinement, Sunday to be at home, Sunday for no movement. And then they say, these confinements, these lockdowns helped the, the improvement of climate, helped the improvement of air quality. That's what it says here, air quality improvements from COVID lockdowns confirmed. COVID-19 lockdowns brought rapid and unprecedented improvements in air quality in some parts of the world, but not enough to halt climate change caused by global warming, United Nations weather experts said on Friday. So it's not enough. Of course, not enough because they want Sunday as a day of worship. They want to bring Climate Sunday lockdowns so that Sunday will be a day to repair the air quality. And this will be for every day that is Sunday. It says here, the lockdown was a relief to the environment, but the effects have now worn off. The positive effect that lockdowns had on the environment has completely dissipated. And the air quality has actually worsened in various parts of the world due to the extreme weather events that caused 
sand and dust storms, as well as wildfires. And in India, just this week, New Delhi schools closed due to high levels of airborne toxicity. And what is the plan? Schools closed as smoke late in India capital considers lockdown. It's interesting because the lockdown will be for Sunday. And here it says for weekends, schools were closed indefinitely and some coal-based power plants shut down as the smoke shrouded Indian capital and neighboring states invoked harsh measures Wednesday amid considerations of a lockdown in New Delhi to combat worsening air pollution. A lockdown for New Delhi is coming. But pay attention to this. It's not clear how far it would go, but the New Delhi government has already shown its willingness to impose an emergency, emergency weekend lockdown, similar to the one implemented during the pandemic. It's now waiting for the Supreme Court's decision, which could come as early as November 24th. So similar to the lockdown during the pandemic. What happened during the pandemic? They had Sunday as a day for confinement. But here they also have in India car-free Sunday. For example, since 2013, they have been experimenting with cities car-free on Sunday. And during the pandemic, of course, Sunday lockdown brings life to a standstill. In many of the states in India, Sunday was a day for lockdown during the pandemic. This news of November 2nd, 2021 says the destructive impact of climate change in Mexico, longer droughts, more frequent floods, more rampant fires. The climate crisis is not a feared scenario of the future. It is a reality with catastrophic consequences, even today. The Spirit of Prophecy says the crisis is coming against the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He says, while appearing to the children of men as a great physician, this is Satan, who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until populous cities, populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon those whose obedience to God's commandments is a perpetual reproof to transgressors. So they will be blaming our Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters for the great catastrophes that are soon to continue to take place in this world. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are travelers of the people, preventing the restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. Dear brothers and sisters, we are, of, we are warned to get out of the cities because a crisis is looming, a crisis is coming. The spirit of prophecy says the world is no more in harmony with the principles of Christ today than it was in the days of the apostles. The same hatred that prompted this cry, crucify him, crucify him. The same hatred that led to the persecution of the disciples 
still works in the children of disobedience. Psalms 119 verse 126 says, it is time for thee, O Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. It is time for the Lord Jesus to come. It is time for the Lord Jesus to redeem his people, to save us. Moses, with joy, Moses saw the law of God still honored and exalted by a faithful few. He saw the last great struggle of earth's powers to destroy those who keep God's law. Moses saw what is coming, but there will be a few that will be faithful until the coming of the Lord Jesus. There will be few that will remain loyal to, to the Lord Jesus and to his commandments. There will be few who will not be afraid of any consequences for preaching present truth, for preaching the three angels' messages. There will be few that will overcome the beast, the image of the beast, the mark of the beast, and the number of the beast. And these few will be able to sing the song of Moses. Would you like to sing the song of Moses? And say, this is our God. We have waited for him and he shall save us. Revelation chapter 15, verse three says, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the lamb saying, great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. And dear brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus says to you, to me, whosoever shall overcome, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. And the Lord Jesus says, rather, I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Would you like to be in the kingdom of heaven? Would you like your name to remain written in, in the book of life? And would you like the Lord Jesus to confess your name before our heavenly father in heaven and before his angels? Oh, my brother and sister, may the Lord Jesus help us to abandon the world, to reject the vanities of this world, to reject the, the living styles of the city and get out of the city before it's too late. May God bless us and help us and prepare us for the coming of our Lord Jesus and for the kingdom of heaven. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen.